Imagine what the Word could do today. Because I know Pastor Tony is prepared and, and has got a great word for us this morning. Uh, we're continuing our series of meeting Jesus. And today we're talking about Jesus and the children. And, and how he encountered or met the children and, and that kind of stuff. It's going to be awesome, right? Yes. You excited? Yes. 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 Does anybody need help with that? Because, <laughs> yeah. We're excited, right? Woo! Yes. Woo! <laughs> I'm trying to pump them up for you. You want to pump up, right? Yeah. Pump right. up. Let's do this. Let's do this then. As Pastor Tony makes his way up here, stand and give him a hand clap and thank Jesus for him. <laughs> Amen. That's for Jesus. That's for Jesus. Thank you. You know that, or maybe you don't remember, this is our what, fourth week in the series. So um, the theme verse for our series is go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Or King James says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Um, and <clears throat> do you think maybe some of those creatures might be kids? Yes. yes. Every creature, that would include kids, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> some of you live with creatures. <laughs> yeah. In our um, leaders meeting a couple of weeks ago, uh, I think we decided that the biggest ministry we have in this church is our ministry to kids, mm -hmm. um, the, the children's ministry. Um, this morning, Kristen is back there with them, and they're learning about Jesus and learning the word. Um, at their level and I'm really grateful for those of you who are involved in, in the children's church and working in the nursery and with the youth um, over the past five and a half years I can't even count the number of kids and youth that, that have been ministered to from this little place this group of people <clears throat> And we want to always keep at the forefront of our mind that our ministry isn't just in this room on Sunday mornings. We have more ministry than just what happens here on Sunday morning. Um, and, and part of it is what happens back there in that room. Um, and then even beyond there. Because it, it's easy just to kind of, one of my, my pet peeves is people who ignore children. Mm -hmm. And, and treat them like they're not really people. Because I remember when I was a kid, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not getting choked up, I just have a throat pain. I might get choked up, but not yet. You're a kid. When I was a kid, a couple of years ago, I, I remember people, adults, who spoke into my life, and, and probably in ways that they didn't even realize were making a big impact for my future. They, they really, touched my life through their words and through the way they treated me. I mean, I can remember people in, in my home church down the street um, who, who made me feel like I was important. I mean, just as a little kid, and they made me feel important. And, and so I, I want every time children walk through the doors of this place, I want them to feel like they're just as important as anybody else in the room. Uh, that's, 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 an important value of Transformation House. If you ever look at our values on our website, you should know what they are just by the way we do ministry and the way we treat people. Um, but if you ever want to see what they are, you can go to trans greenvilletransformation.org slash values and you'll find out. Um, well, you probably know the story in the Bible of Jesus and the children. Um, you know, when the children came up and the parents brought the children to Jesus and um, you know what you, you probably have had that experience with some kid pulling on your shirt tail mommy, mommy, mom, mom, mommy mom, 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 mom. <laughs> or daddy whatever uh, yeah, Gramsci <clears throat> and you've probably heard the response oh, they're just looking for attention, attention. They're just looking for attention. Um, 
Do you realize that attention is a basic need? Mm -hmm. Not just children, but especially children. Attention is a basic need just as, big, just as important as shelter or food or attention is something that kids need. It's something that God put, a need that God put in us. So yeah, sometimes they are just looking for attention and sometimes it's because they haven't been given the attention that they need. They, they, there are, sadly, there are children who are neglected and abused all around us. And, um, and so if I'm around a child, I don't know what their life is like at home. You know, and I could stand as an adult judging how a child acts and blaming it on their, their bad behavior or on, well, they're just spoiled or whatever. Or I can just take it on myself to show the child from my perspective, what I see they need, like attention. I can give them some attention. Um, anyway, the story of Jesus in Mark chapter 10 says Jesus, people were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. But the disciples said, eh, they're just looking for attention. <laughs> and Jesus is way too important for children. The disciples rebuked them and when Jesus saw this, he was indignant. And he said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. And truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. <clears throat> now we're going to talk about, keep talking about, children for a minute, but we need to make this about us too. Um, so the parents, the, the people in the village where Jesus was, they were bringing children to Jesus for him to, it says, for him to place his hands on them. So they're coming, Jesus, teacher, evangelist, rock star, <laughs> movie star, pastor, what, whatever, you know, person might be the most popular in the room at the time or the most prominent. Um, I want you to put your hands on my children. I want you to, I want my children to be touched by you. You know, like parents take their kids to see whoever. I'm not going to name any names, but, you know, whoever their child's favorite Disney star is, or politicians. Oh Lord, do we have to go there? Um, Please, no. <laughs> or whoever. Yeah, but yes, Darnell, yes, politicians do. Um, they, they want, you know how special it is if you go, to, oh no, let's go to Clemson, to the Clemson game. Coach Swinney. Would, would you come autograph my kids' <laughs> program? Um, isn't that cool? Or where, whoever your favorite team is. But wouldn't that be cool if, if the head coach from your favorite team came over and talked to your child and gave your child some... I, I don't want to you know, cause you to be distracted by me saying politicians or Clemson or whatever. Um, but wouldn't that be cool if they gave your child some attention? So this, this is what Jesus was. Jesus was the celebrity of his day in his town. When he showed up, all the crowds came and gathered around him. We heard about it last week. Um, Pastor Chris talked to us about how Jesus fed 5,000 people. 5,000 people thronging around Jesus, and these people are bringing their little kids, and we want to get a front row seat, Jesus. You give my child some attention. And... The disciples saw the 5,000 people and didn't see any need for kids to get in the way. So it says the disciples rebuked them. The, what they really neglected to see was that the kids needed a touch from Jesus. These parents weren't asking for something wrong. They, the children, as much as the adults, needed Jesus' attention too. Um, in fact... <clears throat> 
Now, I don't remember if it's the story that Pastor Chris read to us last week or if it's the other, because there were two different occasions when Jesus fed thousands of people um, with just a little bit of food. Um, and I'm not sure if it was the 5,000 or if it was the 3,000, but at some point it says that there were thousands of men besides the women and children that Jesus fed. So the crowds were huge that came to Jesus, and children were included in the blessing of the breaking of the bread and the fish. Children were fed by Jesus, and now, that, I mean, that's a basic need, so they were hungry. Children are always hungry. Um, I'm starving. They're, they, they're just going to waste away to nothing if you don't feed them right now. And so can you imagine 5,000 men? And then they've got their families with them and all these whiny children. I'm hungry. Mommy, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. And Jesus took care of them. He fed them as much as they wanted to eat and still had leftovers. Well, just as needy as they were for food, they were also needy for a touch from Jesus, for his attention. Um, and that's what the disciples neglected to see, that they needed attention. Jesus was needed by the children. On almost every list that you look at of what um, a human's basic needs are, human touch is going to be there. On almost any list that you look at, one of the basic needs that we have is human touch. And so I think it's significant that the Bible says they were bringing their children to Jesus for him to touch them, to lay his hands on them. Um, now, you know, this is something else that I think about, and it's one of the reasons I'm such a touchy-feely, huggy person. Mm -hmm. Now, the real reason is just because I like to be touched. Um, but past the selfish part of wanting touch and hugs and all that, um, I, th I think about people who, for instance, who live alone or who don't have family or who have kind of fractured family, and I wonder, who ever touches that person? When do they ever get a handshake or a hug or a pat on the back? When do they ever feel another human being? Because we're, we're created with that need. And so it's one reason that I'm always happy to give hugs and handshakes because I want to be, the Bible says Jesus is touched by us and he touches us. We need it from each other too. Um, and I love, several years ago, Pastor Chris did a sermon and, and I made a list from his sermon. So I went back to find my list of the 10 basic needs that he told us about that, that, um, that children have, that things that we needed to receive as children. We may have received some of them. We may not have received many of them. Um, some of them, we, our parents or the adults in our lives were better at giving than others. Um, but, but the 10 basic things that he told us were, and, and if you want to write these down, go ahead, then I won't have to look them up later and do another sermon. We'll just get really good at this. Um, Attention, acceptance, affirmation, appreciation, those all start with A's, so you might be able to remember them. Affection, security, comfort, encouragement, respect, and support. Okay, now, this morning in this room, let's stop thinking about the children, the children's ministry children in our lives. And let's think about ourselves for a minute. We've all passed childhood, most of us. Um, some of us are still working on it. And, um, and one of the reasons we still work on some of these areas is because part of these needs weren't met when we were 5 and 6 and 10 and 12. We, didn't, we weren't shown attention or affection or affirmed or encouraged or made to feel secure. Um, we have a lot of lack. There are a lot of holes in, in, the, in these places that didn't get filled up for us when we were children. Um, 
But I want us to think about the, those first five, attention, acceptance, affirmation, appreciation, four. <laughs> those first four. Um, the Bible tells us in this verse the three things that Jesus did. It wasn't just they, they came for him to place his hands on them, but there were three things that he did in response to them coming when he told the disciples, do not hinder these kids from coming up here. Don't you stop them. Let them come. And when they came, it says that he placed his hands on them, number one. And, and to me, that covers these first four. I mean, we can do that using our hands. We can give a person attention. We can accept them. We can affirm them, appreciate them. Um, you know, if you're... I mean, think about it. Jesus in the crowd, and 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 there's 5,000 people, and all these little kids are pushing their way through, and you can think about yourself as a little child trying to push your way through a crowd to get to Jesus, and and you see him, and there he is. You find me right up to the front, and you're looking between, you know, these two tall people, and you're looking at him, and all of a sudden, he looks at you, and he sees you, and, and Jesus doesn't just look away, but he focuses on you. Can you just imagine? Jesus knows I'm here. He gave me some attention. Or, or the, the next need was acceptance. What if he said, and he came over and shook your hand and pulled you out of the crowd over to himself? Do you feel accepted? Yeah? Yes. Yes. Yeah. What if you were the little boy with the fish and the bread? <laughs> and he's wanting to feed all these people, and you're the one with the basket of food. I feel angry. This is my fish and this is my fish. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got some food? Okay, I got some food. Kind of hard to hide fish. It's right here. And Jesus affirms you because you're you and you know when you've done something that people appreciate they use their hands like like you did this morning like you were forced to do this morning <laughs> you know you show appreciation with your hands all of these things our hands are useful for other people in good ways you touch me in good ways. I've been touched in bad ways in my life. There are, have been times when, when uh, I was abused, and I know people who were abused much worse than I was at the, at the misuse of somebody else's hands. But me and God gave us these hands for good. And for Jesus to put his hands on us, for us to be able to affirm and accept and appreciate one another and give attention to one another by using our hands is a big deal. <laughs> but we also have to be careful because you don't know how some, you know, you know what a scared dog is who's been abused and you go to pet him and he snarls at you. You know that he hasn't been treated right. Yeah. And kids the same way. And so we have to be careful with one another because and that's why I don't just, you know, force hugs on people because I don't know who can accept that. Um, then the next three things that, that Pastor Chris told us we need were affection, security, and comfort. And the next thing that Jesus did after he placed his hands on them, it says he took them in his arms. No, we weren't coming for all this. <laughs> we were just coming for you to place your hands on them. But, but now Jesus is like embracing <coughs> these kids. He's, he's taking them up in, onto his lap and he's, he's holding them took them in his arms, he's showing them affection. We do that. We show affection with hugs. He was showing them security. Um, I know lots of people who grew up in anything but a secure family. I mean, it was a broken mess of a family and they had no sense of security at all and they're 
I've heard lots of stories over the years um, of people who still, as adults, lie awake at night feeling insecure because there's still nobody there that, you know, that just holds them up. That just says, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. They don't have a rock. And what Jesus gives to us with his embrace is a place to belong. It's a secure place that no matter how far we run, he never gives up on us. And we have security in Jesus and he shows it to us and he showed it to these kids by his embrace. And then there's comfort that is the seventh basic need that we have, comfort. Do you suppose one of those kids that came to Jesus with a baby? Can you imagine Jesus? The one who spoke this kid into existence anyway in the first place, who decided this child's going to be born, and he takes this crying baby and holds it in his arms, Have you ever needed comfort and been rejected by the person you expected to be comforted by? I, mean, I can't even tell that story, but I know a perfect story for this situation that you'll never hear. Um, <laughs> I just can't tell another person's story, I'm sorry. But, but there are lots of, you have your own story. You probably can tell your own story that you needed to be comforted and the very person, maybe a parent or a spouse or whoever, the very person that you expected you could go to and you could just sit on the couch beside them and cuddle up and they would hold you the whole night through if that's what it took and you would be comforted by them and they weren't there. Or worse, they were there, and they wouldn't give you the comfort that you needed. That's not Jesus. Because Jesus said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. And the third thing Jesus did, he put his hands on them, he took them in his arms, and he blessed them. Those last three things that Chris said we needed were encouragement and respect and support. Do you see how that's blessing? Encouragement. Encouragement. Hmm. We talked a few weeks ago about what encourage means. To put courage in. To encourage somebody is to put courage in them. Little kids. Think about this. If Jesus encouraged them, if he spoke blessing into their life, do you think they would remember that? When Jesus spoke encouragement to you, is that a word you can hold on to and take through the rest of your life? Um, you, most of you know that um, Christina passed away this week, Christina Lothar, and her service was yesterday. And Larry, um, her husband, talked about how when they were married, they had known each other for several years, and um, before they realized, oh, this is who I'm supposed to be married to. And, uh, and the way they found, he said, the way that they found out they were supposed to be married to each other was from a word from God, that God spoke to their hearts and said, that's the person for you. And, and he said, so we lived a whole life, 30 years. They were married for 30 years on the day before she passed was their anniversary. 30 years they were married, and he threw, and, and I know their life, I know their story, through some pretty rough times. But he said, we never, we never gave up on each other. We never walked away because our marriage was based on what started our marriage, which was the word from God. That God gave us his word, so anytime there was a rough patch, we just said, well, God knew this was going to happen when he told us to get married 30 years ago. So it's, you know, when you, when you have encouragement, 
and, and you're facing something that should cause fear, you don't have to have fear because Jesus has put courage in you because God has not given us a spirit of fear. Sounds familiar. But a spirit of love and power and a sound mind. So, so Jesus brings us encouragement and then respect. And support. Those last two things. Um, that I believe come along with encouragement. You don't encourage somebody you don't respect. And once you encourage somebody, you're probably going to be there to support them because you have faith that what they're doing, <coughs> they're going to be successful at. So, in all of these things, and all these, these ten needs, as, as we're going through these, I kind of suspect you had stories of your own going through your mind. That maybe you went back to your childhood and you think, you know, or if you didn't do it now, it's okay, or at some point this week. Because if any of these things are lacking, if, if we weren't given these ten things specifically, and the three things more generally of the touch and um, the encouragement, the support from others or from our parents, if we weren't given those, there's some hole there. There, there's a hole in our heart or in our emotions. Somehow there's something missing. And the neediness that you exhibit now is probably based on that hole. Now I know you don't consider yourself needy. But just look at the person sitting next to you and say, you're needy. Because every person in here is needy. Okay, look in the mirror. Say, you're needy. Um, now, <laughs> you might, you might, you know, look around the room, don't do that, but you might look around the room and say, well, this person's more needy than, than the rest of us. <laughs> you might think of somebody, you know, somebody might come to mind and you think, well, that person's really needy. That, that's an EGR person. Do you know who the EGR people are? Extra grace required. <laughs> you, you might know some of those people that are extra needy, but you know what? It's just that they exhibit it more than the rest of us. We all have needs. We, we all are needy to some degree. Um, and I would say probably nearly 100% of it is based on what's missing from this list <laughs> in our development year, developmental years. So, were you given attention? Were you affirmed? Were you accepted? Do you feel like you belonged? Were you appreciated? Were you given security, support, encouragement, comfort, respect? Did you get all those things? How were you shown these things when you were a child? Um, was there somebody in your life that just went the extra mile and made sure you got some of these things? I mean, they just made sure because they knew you and they knew you required something, whatever it was that was missing. And sometimes it wasn't parents. Maybe there was a person like a grandmother or an aunt or an uncle or a teacher or somebody who stepped in where they saw a void in your life and they they came and they they decided I this child's not growing up without knowing that they're loved. I think it would be good for us to do an introspection and say yeah, this one is completely missing and then say when, you know, because, okay, for instance, um, let's just pick one. Encouragement. I never got a word of encouragement my whole life. Not one single word, not one time did my, and I'm just making this up, okay. Not one single time in my whole life did my parents or an uncle or a teacher or anybody ever encourage me. Not, but it's really not a big deal. I don't really need any encouragement. I'm just fine without encouragement. Okay, so if you see that there was, for instance, encouragement was missing in your life. Now, 
take a step back and really look and say, okay, how does that really affect me? How am I acting in ways based on that lack of encouragement or whatever it is? The big one. The big one that you feel like you're missing. How are, you know, how are you making demands now? <laughs> or what are you substituting? What's taking the place of what you really need? For instance, if you need, I think this one's probably common for us in America, if you need comfort, what comforts you? There's not a person there. Nobody comes along and, sweet comfort, nobody comes along and hugs you or comforts you when you're down. You feel like, I'm, I'm just always in this state of depression. I'm, I'm never comforted by anybody. Yes, you are. You're just substituting something for the person that should be there. So what are you putting in that person's place? Because it's where addictions come from, for instance. We become addicted to this chocolate. <laughs> See, I didn't go to the deep ones. Um, to this whatever, drugs, alcohol. It, it could be anything. It could be anything. It's meeting a legitimate need that we have. I really need this. Well, I need something. I don't necessarily need this, but I need something. So, how do you remedy that? How do you re remedy the hole that's in your heart that needs to be filled with somebody, with, with something that you're missing? And how do you fill that hole without going to something that's damaging you? Because the damage could be another person that you stick in that spot that you think that person's there for comfort and you're not getting a bit of comfort from them. All you're doing is becoming addicted to them being there. It's not really comfort. It's not really solving the issue. It's just filling the hole. Did we get just too deep right there? Um, well, Jesus was always the teacher. He always gave a lesson. He always made a point out of anything that happened. Here come these little kids. How are you going to make a point out of this? But Jesus did it. He said, unless you become like a little child, unless you become like these kids that are running up here for me to touch them, and they're just wildly expecting, and they don't even know what they need. They're just coming to see me. And Jesus gave them all that they needed. Everything they needed was in Jesus. So I'm saying to us that the first place you should run when there's a hole in your heart is to Jesus. Amen. The first place you should run when you're missing something in your life is to Jesus. When you need comfort or acceptance or encouragement, the first place you should go is to his presence and to his word and listen to what he says to you. <coughs> listen to what, what Jesus wants to say because he said, unless you become like this little child, How do I become like that little child? Well, just realize what I really need is a touch from Jesus. I need Jesus' hands. I need, I need Jesus' arms. I, I need Jesus' blessing in my life. What I need is him. Um, <laughs> 1 Timothy 4.8 says, Physical training is of some value. Physical training has value, but godliness has value for all things. You, you, can, you can work on your physical being, and that's good, but your spiritual being affects all of you. Okay, the truth. And he says this, holding promise, the, the you know, coming to God for the answers to the hole in your heart, holds a promise for both the present life and the life to come. And, and, and I know, you know, when Paul wrote to Timothy, he's talking about, you know, go work out all you want to, but don't neglect to work out your spiritual issues. Um, 
because your spiritual issues aren't just for here and now, but they're for eternity. <coughs> your eternity is affected by what you do spiritually today. Well, I, I think we can even apply this in a different way, that, you, you know, as, as children, there's still a life to come. There's an adulthood to come. So, so working out physically or, you know, feeding yourself and getting the physical needs of a child is important, but meeting spiritual needs even while they're children affects not just their childhood, but it also affects the life to come, the adulthood. We're affected today by what we did as children. It's never too late to become a child. I, I'm pretty sure that I was 12 years old until I was about 30. <laughs> Seriously. And then I only turned 17 when I was 30. <laughs> and now I might be up to about 25. <laughs> Does that sound familiar? Anybody relate to that? Um, I mean, emotionally, I had so many holes, so much emptiness that never got filled in those little places. And then I got to, you know, 30 years old and I still had the holes and, and I, found, I, I found the answer to some of those issues when I was about 30 years old and I grew up a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Enough to realize I had more holes. I had more needs. Um, 2 Corinthians 2, 8 and 9 says, God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all time, having all that you need, you'll abound in every good work. God is able to bless you. And you know, and I know in 2016, it's very popular in Christian culture to say, um, you know, well, that's just, you know, pr praying and and spending time in the Word, going to church, that, that just doesn't do too much. You know. This says God's able to bless you so that you have everything that you need all the time. So that you can do everything you need to do. God. God. Right here. God is able to bless you abundantly. So that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you can do what you need to do. You can succeed, you can abound in doing the good works. Um, all those holes, God can fill them. Now, I, I believe that by the power of the Holy Spirit, God comes into us and dwells us and fills us up with him. The life that we receive through the vine that we talked about just a couple series ago, we get life from Jesus by being attached to him. He gives us the life that we need. All those holes can be filled But I understand that when God does the filling, sometimes he uses our brothers and sisters. It's not just all the supernatural, oh, I'm filled up now. Mm -hmm. But I get filled up by my fellowship with you. I, I get filled up from worshiping with you. I get filled up learning from you and, and watching your life and seeing how God works in you. I, I get filled up from the encouragement. I need your hands. I need your arms. I need your blessing because God's doing it. <coughs> that if he wanted to do it by himself, he would have never created this. He wouldn't have given us family. He wouldn't have created church. It'd just be me and Jesus got our own thing going. <laughs> we don't need nobody to tell us what it's all about. Really? Okay. Well, anyway. I know, none of you are old enough to even know that song. Okay, 2 Peter 1, 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine nature hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Everything that we need for this life, everything that we need that pertains to life and to living a godly life, 
He's given it to us. Has. Has. Right? Path. Okay, path. Path given unto us. That's past. <laughs> My point is that that is past tense. He has done it. He has already given us everything that we need to fill up all this emptiness, to give us the abundant life that he promised us. He's given it to us already. We have it. All we have to do is take advantage of it. All we have to do is recognize it in each other. Call it out in each other. Encourage one another. Don't put each other down. You know, it's easy to point out the faults. It's easy to point the finger at somebody where they're messing up. But how many times are you the voice of encouragement and the voice of comfort and the voice that calls them higher? In the last verse, Philippians 4.19, my God, you know this one, my God shall supply all of your needs. How does he do it? He supplies all, how? According to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. God supplies all of our needs. And as always, through our relationship with Jesus, through him being connected to the vine, he's the vine, we're the branches. Jesus is key to all of us. Jesus, our being open to listen to him and to hear what he has to say. Um, you know, when, when you come to a place where you hear this kind of message, and it opens up those places. You know, it's like. Some of those things are things that you've tried to suppress. You already know them, but you've tried to suppress them over the years. Let's just keep that one down. I'm okay. I don't have to deal with that. Let's just, let's just keep that one down. You know what it's like to hold a basketball underwater? Yeah. Anybody ever tried? Yeah. Did it ever stay down there when you let go? No. No, what happened? It just made a worse mess. When, when you, when, when it, find, if I, the farther down you push it, the farther down below water level that you push it, the, wor the worse it's going to come up. The harder it's going to come up, the worse mess it's going to make. It's easier just to let that stuff float to the surface then let's deal with it, right? So what we need is for somebody to bring us to Jesus and say, Jesus, would you just put your hands on this person? Would you, would you take my friend in your arms and would you bless them, right? And then... And all those places that have been broken and the holes that aren't filled. I believe that he'll use us to, to fill them for one another. But I think it really does require that we put Jesus first that we come to him first. Jesus, your way. I'm, I'm looking for your way. I'm listening for your voice. How do you want to fill this instead of how do I want to fill this? Lord, if, you know, if I take chocolate, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, I'll call it chocolate. If I take chocolate out of the mix and stop trying to fill this hole with chocolate, what would you fill it with? Well, <laughs> it can, absolutely, man, I can solve a lot of my problems if I had enough money. Me and the mall could fix everything, almost. I wouldn't be nearly as depressed if I, if I didn't have such a need for more money. <laughs> It'd just be a different need. So, so what we need to do now 
okay, Lord, I'm, I'm going to remove my answer to this issue from, from the equation and let you put in your answer. What do you want to do? Let me hear what you want to do, Lord, in, in me. Can we pray together? Father, we need you. We recognize that we all have holes, that we all have needs, and our, our neediness has led us in the wrong direction so many times. So we ask Jesus that you would fill this up. Holy Spirit, fill us, indwell us, empower us. And let us pray the prayer of Jesus. Not my will, but thy will be done. Lord, we talk about and we sing about how great you are, and then we act like you're not great enough to solve our problems. We can't, you can't possibly understand what we're going through and know how to fix this. But Lord, you are great, and today we say we recognize your greatness. We recognize your power and your concern for us that you would create a way for us to be healed and whole. So we ask you, Jesus, open our ears to hear your voice. Give us clear direction and give us wisdom to follow through. Lord, I pray that you would, for, for those of us who have been wounded from childhood by neglect, I pray that you would heal those wounds. That for those of us who have damaged ourselves because we've, we've tried to fill those places with, with things that were not your intention. Lord, heal us from the hurt we've caused ourselves. Let us follow wholeheartedly after you. Jesus, we come to you now. We come to you collectively and individually and we say, Jesus, would you touch us? Would you put your hands on us? Would you wrap us in your arms and would you bless our lives? Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you that you don't turn us away. And when other people try to stand in the way like your disciples did, you will always say, move out of the way and let my children come to me. We love you, Lord, because you're always there. And because you love us first. We give you glory, Lord, for what you're going to do. We praise you because we know that you have created this congregation. You have made us a church body with purpose. Now help us to carry it out and proclaim this good news to every person we meet. Jesus is the healer and the savior. Lord, heal our world. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.